Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Spock, and in this video, <clears throat> I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about uh, gold leaf, gold leaf striping, the way, basically the way that I do it. There's a lot of ways to do it. I'm sure there's other artists out there that do it different, but this is the way I was taught. This is what I learned. So, if you've seen my work, maybe learn my way and then incorporate your own way of doing things to my style, then uh, this is the video for you. But, hmm, I've never done a video like this, you know? So, I guess uh, let's give it a try. Let's go check this out. Let me know if you uh if you like the way that it's done. If you have any questions, comments, you know you know where to put them, and uh, we'll go from there. Let's get started. All right, guys. Well, to get started, I'm gonna show you the different types of leaf, and um, of course, not all the different types of leaf. I'm going to show you the type that I'm using today and um, the difference between these leaves. So loose leaf, AKA surface leaf is actually basically loose sheets of leaf placed between these papers. So they're actually loose. You can see that they're, they're just kind of in there. They'll float away with the wind. They're a little bit hard to, to uh, manipulate, but a lot of people like that type of leaf. It's great because I love variegated leaf. And um, what variegated leaf is, is actually treated with chemicals to get cool designs and patterns like this red variegated leaf. So this is imitation gold leaf. The imitation gold leaf is made of like copper and zinc, which means that it can tarnish. So one thing we're going to do when we lay down this leaf is definitely wear gloves. So you want to wear gloves when you're touching this stuff because the moisture that gets on it will help, you know, help it tarnish. doesn't matter if you clear it, if the, if the moisture already got to it, it's going to tarnish. Um, I know there's a lot of artists out there on YouTube posting videos and touching the leaf and rubbing it on. Uh, it's okay if it's 22 karat, 14 karat. 18 karat leaf that doesn't tarnish but if you're using variegated or if you're using any type of um just the imitation leaf um it's it's gonna tarnish uh, the good thing about using real gold if you use real gold is that it's thinner too it's i mean it's that, that stuff you throw it in the air and it'll just sit there and float it's that thin uh, the imitation leaf is a little bit different it's a little bit thicker so you can actually feel it um, of course, if you're going to clear over it, which you have to clear over it, you can't just leave imitation leaf out in the open. Um, that's not going to matter because it's still thin enough to where, you know, one coat of clear is, is going to, you know, make it to where you can't feel it anymore. But um, so that's that. And then there's transfer leaf, a.k.a. patent leaf. That's this leaf here. So the difference is this is actually stuck to the paper. So it's not going to fly off. You have more control. You can manipulate it. Once you lay your, your gold size down, so say we're doing pinstriping today. We're going to do a, pin, a gold gold leaf pinstripe design. So once that is tacky enough, you can just literally like just rub this onto your onto your um, your design. And then when you go to peel the paper, your leaf stays stuck on. You don't have leaf flying all over the place. So that's what's cool about this kind. But it's all it's all fake leaf. So. It will all tarnish. You gotta make sure you wear gloves. All right, so another thing you're gonna need is 100% sterilized cotton. This is used for burnishing your gold. So after you lay your gold down, say your design is on here and it's dry enough to burnish, you use cotton, 100% cotton. The softest you can get and just rub on the gold. Try not to touch it, but just 
polish it. You get the brightest shine out of it. You could also do spins, which is a velvet spinner, where you'll see those little engine turns on the gold. This is what they use. This is the old school way, a little velvet spinner, spin it with your hand, or you could put it on a drill and get really nice spins. Um, one of the newer stuff, some of the newer stuff that's been out there, shout out to my boy Dino. He made us this like 10 years ago. It's uh, one of these little spinners with Velcro on the end, and then you put the little spinner on it and you get perfect spins. Uh, you throw it into a drill and then bam, you get perfect spins. But another thing you're gonna need, little Dixie cups. These are just like medicine cups you can buy them on Amazon. That's for putting your, your sizing, which is your glue. Um, this stuff right here. I use one shot size right here. There's a few other ones. There's some that are better. There's some that are not as good. Um, I'm loyal to this brand right here. One shot, it's pretty good. And it's this is sizing. So this is what we're gonna use to paint the stripes with. You put a little drop of this, which is imitation gold. It's just paint, just so you can see it because the sizing is actually clear. So when you put this onto the surface, you won't see it. If you put a little drop of this gold, you'll see what you're doing. And since it's gold and you're laying gold leaf on top of it, if there is any holidays or little holes or whatever, you're, it's not gonna make a big difference. You don't want any holes, but if you do happen to get them, you're better off if there's gold underneath. We use reducer, of course, to reduce our paint, to re reduce our gold size. This is just a regular reducer. You can buy it from one shot or you can use mineral spirits. Um, I don't use mineral spirits anymore. Um, it's just a preference, but you can use it. It's cheap. This stuff we sell in our shop. Um, so go to the website. The link will be in the description and you can buy it. Uh, but mineral spirit is just fine if you're practicing. Another thing, some paper towels. You want your area to be as clean as possible. You want to do clean work, so keep your area clean. Look, little, little popsicle sticks. Of course, with the cups, when you put your paint in there, use little sticks to mix it. But another thing you're going to need is a makeup brush. The cheapest one you can find is fine, whatever, but it helps get the excess leaf off before you go to burnish and it's soft enough to where it's not going to hurt the leaf and these are two different ones two completely different brands cheap you can buy them at any drugstore or any makeup store and they're cheap so with that said let's get started all right so we're going to start off by putting some of these mineral spirits in here I still use mineral spirit. I know I said I don't, but I use it to clean my brushes. It's a lot cheaper than cleaning your brushes with the regular. <clears throat> Make sure you get all that oil off. The reason there's oil on the brush is because when you're done painting, you always got to make sure you oil the brush so that none of the excess paint that gets in the ferrule, which is the metal part of the brush, stays in there and ruins your brush oil keeps it wet so we put a little bit of reduce or a little bit of a uh, of sizing which is the glue and now it's just a drop of gold paint this is all enamel paints it's all oil based or enamel based but just a drop like i said earlier so you can see it and then you can use you know popsicle sticks or if you need a bigger one, usually you can get them on Amazon. Their tongue suppressors is what I like using. This is just like a corn dog stick or something. I don't, I don't even know where I got this from. But you gotta check the consistency, make sure it's good. And uh, yeah, this is a tongue suppressor. Um, it's this, basically the one that the doctors stick in your mouth when they're checking your tonsils or whatever they do I don't know what they do I ain't no doctor 
I'm barely a pinstriper. <laughs> so I usually go to, um, whenever I travel, I usually stay in hotels and I steal these from the office. They're just basically brochures for things to do in the area, but they work great for palleting. You can throw them away when you're done. You can steal a buttload of them. Technically, it's not stealing because they're free. And um, when you're done, you just throw them out. What I like about them is they're cleared so they don't have any paint that comes off and changes the color of your paint. So, but, so we'll start off by doing a cool little curly cue design. And now you can see why I put that old paint in there. I can see what I'm actually doing. If I didn't put that gold paint in there, I wouldn't know what the hell I was doing because this panel is red, but it's cleared, so it's high gloss. And if you're just using the glue, it's clear, so you're not going to be able to see it. Now, I might have a little bit of an issue with the gold there where it's really thick. You don't want that thickness. That right there is no good. but. This is a practice panel, so let's see. Like I said, this is that composite leaf. It's stuck on the paper, so you don't have to worry about it floating everywhere and making a big mess. And then, I know I didn't talk about this part. So this is a roller. This is a roller that's usually used for like lino cut designs. You can find it at any art store. But it helps to press the leaf down into the glue. Um, by the way, that glue, that was a 30 minute wait before I actually laid the leaf down. You have to make sure that the glue is tacky enough to hold the, the gold leaf, but not too dry to where it doesn't stick anymore. That's just going to be a trial and error thing. You're going to have to figure that one out off as you go it's usually about 30 minute wait depending on the weather or wherever you're at this is arizona but i'm indoors so there was a 30 minute wait for this one this tape you don't have to do this but i like my area super clean that tape catches most of the leaf that excess leaf that comes off the paint so it helps keep my area clean what I'm doing here is burnishing. I'm burnishing the design. What that means is I'm polishing it. So I'm really rubbing off any excess leaf that's not stuck to the, to the glue at the same time polishing the leaf. So I use these makeup brushes as well. The, the cotton is not gonna get all the little areas out, but this soft, super soft makeup brush won't scratch the leaf. And because it's little hairs, it'll actually get into the cracks and pull off excess not stuck to the um, to the glue. That little picker thing is just in case the brush can't get really tiny little areas. I pick them with the little pick and rub it again with some cotton and we're all set. The more you burn it, means the more you rub the cotton, the shinier, shinier it's going to be. And um, I just used tape, the same tape, just fold it up, pick up all the little excess gold that's laying around. Usually if you're working at a client's, you know, if you're doing a car and you're in somebody's body shop, you don't want that gold to be sitting around because it can float around and get into their paint when they're painting the car. So you want to stay as clean as possible to make sure that you get hired again to do another go week job. Right now I'm using ivory to add the second color. Basically just have fun with it. Put your designs wherever you feel they should go. This tutorial was really just supposed to be about the gold leaf, but we gotta make it look cool. We can't just leave the leaf laying there. 
I'm not too happy with that design there, but it's all right. And boop, and boop, boop. She looks like a little knot. I like those. Get a little bit of orange for a second color. Mix it up real good. And palette. Found this book in Colorado. Just finishing up the design. Little whoop de whoops. You can add a second, third, fourth color, make it monochromatic. What I did to this orange is I added some white and then ended up uh, making it a, a highlight inside the orange. We're pretty much just finishing touches. Now we're gonna call it a day on this one. Here's the highlights. Boop, boop. Boop. Well, that's it. Got everything that um, I wanted to get in the video, I think. And this is the final product. Get it to focus. I don't know if you can see that. Um, turned into more than what I was actually expecting. I was just trying to, you know, show you guys how to do leaf, but. Um, I ended up pinstriping it all pretty much, but, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions on the leaf work or how to do certain things, or I didn't explain myself too well, you know, I'm not a video wizard, so, uh, try to get everything in there that I could think of as I was going, but, um, yeah, let me know. Let me know if you have any questions. One thing that I didn't talk about, it was or that I didn't show in the video was actually, I don't know if you can tell, but inside the orange, there's actually a couple of different colors. So there's orange and then there's a light orange. I just added a little bit of white and I basically, um, I don't know if you can see, added a highlight. That just gives it dimension, you know, but you can see the gold really shining there. That's just polished up. That really has no clear on it. Once you put the clear on it, you get even more of a shine. Um, like I said, if you were to use real gold, you're going to get more shine. And we could probably polish it a little bit more, but um, that's about as much as I I need right there. That's that's pretty damn clean right there. So, so yeah, that's the finished product. You can hold it like that. You can hold it like that. You can hold it like that. It's a pretty wild design. You don't really, I don't really do wild designs like this on cars, but I was having fun with it. So yeah, there it is. Gold leaf pinstriping tutorial done. And see you guys in the next one. All right, peace.